I don't think anybody would argue the point that Alzheimer's is a devastating disease, not only to those suffering from it, but also the caregivers who are watching their loved ones slowly fade away. Yeah, in fact, more than 5 million people suffer from Alzheimer's. One new person develops the disease every 67 seconds, and more than 500,000 people die each year because they have Alzheimer's. That's one in three senior citizens dying with this disease every single year. Mm. Well, another startling statistic, caregivers provide nearly 18 billion hours of unpaid care, valued at more than $220 billion. Well, there's no doubt about it. Dedicated caregivers give a lot of their time and energy. As a matter of fact, one woman gave love and care to her ailing husband for years, and now she is inspiring others to do the same. For Deb Wells, walking her dog honors her late husband, John. This became a, a refuge for him. John Wells died three months ago from Alzheimer's disease. I didn't understand before he was diagnosed what was happening to him, but his personality was changing. Wells says words from a book she read helped her persevere. I am no longer dismayed that he doesn't recognize me or himself in the picture. picture. Or that he doesn't know who I am standing next to him. Author of that book, Liz Van Ingen, poured her heart out, writing the memoir, Kismet, from the joy of romance to the agony of Alzheimer's. My mother had saved all my letters, and I incorporated all of that. She added journal entries and long-forgotten memories. Liz shares honestly how she survived the life and death of her husband, giving advice on simple things in life, like keeping a charged cell phone with you all the time. Write everything down in a journal so you don't forget. She learned not to correct, criticize, or argue with her husband. She also started making decisions for her own benefit, not only his. She planned time away and got a helper for a few hours a week. She also went to a support group, and when things got really tough, she took antidepressants. Her words turned out to help others in similar circumstances, and the proof is in black and white in the letters she receives from readers. I loved it from the very first page to the very last. What a story, what a life. Women, words, and hope for the future. Well, Liz's uh, book, The Joy of Romance to the Agony of Alzheimer's, is speaking to the hearts of thousands. and is now available for purchase. Hmm, that sounds like a really neat book, yeah. And it's hearing stories like that that helps give hope to the hopeless. Another way to help spread hope and provide support, the walk to end Alzheimer's. Now, Demarble Life's Sean Stryker joins us from Rehoboth Beach right now, where they're gonna be holding a walk this weekend. So, Sean, we've heard the numbers nationwide. How prevalent is Alzheimer's right here on Delmarva? Yeah, well, Jimmy and Lisa, it's very prevalent. Just to give you an idea, here in Delaware alone, there's over 26 thousand people suffering from the disease and as you can imagine that can be very expensive to care for all those people that's why the walk to end alzheimer's is so important i'm here with one of the walk managers jacqueline adkins jacqueline thanks for joining me now this is one of the biggest walks in the world or the biggest walk uh, to raise awareness for Alzheimer's? Yeah, the Walk to End Alzheimer's is the largest fundraising event in the world. Uh, we have over 650 nationwide and one right here locally in Rehoboth Beach. Yeah, it's a great location. We're here in Grove Park. Um, now, we just said that it raises money to help care for these patients, but that's not the only thing. Yeah, it also helps give programs and services for our caregivers because it's so important for them to take care of themselves as well. Also, we provide uh, funding for vital research and hopes for a cure. Because there is no cure as of right now. No, Alzheimer's is one of the only causes of death in the top 10 where there's no cure, no way to slow its progression, or no way to prevent it. And so far for the walk this year, you have raised somewhere over $69,000. Now that sounds like a lot of money to me, but you guys are looking to raise more. Yeah, we have a long way to go. Uh, we're hoping to raise 120,000, and a lot of that's gonna come in on Saturday, October 4th, right here at the walk. So the walk, like you just said, is Saturday. Uh, give me a, some more details. It's Saturday, October 4th. It's at Grove Park, uh, right off of Rehoboth Avenue. Check-in is at 8.30. It's completely free to walk, but we encourage everyone to make a donation or to fundraise. And it is dog friendly. We know uh, you guys here on Delmarva love your dogs, so bring them on out. Nice walk down along the boardwalk. And if you want more information on the walk or Alzheimer's in general, you can visit our website, wboc.com, and click on our picture at the top of the page. Jimmy and Lisa, back to you guys.
All right, looks like a good time, but if you do head out there, make sure you bundle up. It's supposed to be cool. It'll be a little chilly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, watch out for that. Well, another example of people helping people is Habitat for Humanity. Up next on Timber Live, we're going to show you how one local company is helping to give to the cause as well as give back to the customers they serve. And we're serving it up hot today in the Delmarva Lake Kitchen. Still ahead, food blogger Laura Davis joins us to help us make our very own pumpkin spice latte. But first, you know that Delmarva Life is all about community. That includes your community, too. Is there something going on in your neighborhood? We'd love to hear about it and see your photos from the event. Send the information our way along with any pictures you'd like to share. You can reach us at comments at delmarvalife.com or you can like us on Facebook to share the information there. Delmarva Life will be right back.